Hey everybody, welcome to week five of Semester with Scott. Thus far, I've explained to you the design process, how we come up with collections, and all the people involved with the construction of a quilt collection. Uh, then I showed you how we build a collection. I described to you all the components of a quilt line. And then we went on to sampling, uh, and I explained to you how we make the color cards and all the processes we go through. Then I outlined all the people that we sell to and all the people that sell for us. So after we get up to that point, it's now time to start selling. So as the reps and distributors write orders, uh, the orders need to be submitted into our company for a credit check. With the distributors, we don't have to check their credit because they all have good credit as of these days. With our customers that our reps write the orders for, we actually have to check the credit and make sure they're not overextended or they're not late or anything like that. And just by the way, we do use a factor and they help us with our collections of all of our payments. Uh, then once the order is credit approved, we move the order through the system and it goes to order entry. Order entry, we have several order entry clerks who place the orders into our computer system. After that, when the, it's time for the orders to be shipped, we print the order. So we actually transmit the orders down to the warehouse and somebody at the warehouse, usually Jimmy or Kelly, they print up the orders and then they give them to the pickers. The pickers are the people who actually pick the bolts off the shelf and they will then put the bolts on a buggy and move it to packing and shipping and, and what have you. So, that, so they pick the orders, they strap them in the boxes, they label the boxes, and then they ship them out. We usually ship FedEx ground. Uh, we get a really good rate on that. We, we do tons of volume with them. And some of our customers that are larger, they like to get truckloads. So we will fill up a truck that's either arranged by us or arranged by them. Now that I got you to this spot, uh, you know, where we're ready to start picking the orders, I want to take a step back and explain to you some of the processes that go on at the warehouse and how we get the bolts from the big rolls cut up and put on the shelves and then picked and packed uh, so they could go to your local quilt shop and you could go buy them. Before I get to that though, I just want to say the first thing you see is the sign of the GNS warehouse. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember or not, but in 2018, uh, when we bought Free Spirit, it happened to coincide with the same time that our um, contract warehouse uh, manager decided that he wanted to sell his company. So we were kind of in a bind and there happened to be a building right next door. So we were fortunate to be able to rent that building and we were able to start our own warehouse. So the warehouse, the old warehouse was called SNS, Sam Nancy Sam uh, Warehouse. And now we changed ours to GNS Warehouse, G and S for Greg and Scott. Greg is in charge of the plant, so he got his name up first. I'm the president, so I got to be second. So let's move on, and I want to show you some videos and talk you through that and explain to you uh, the processes. Some of you may have seen some of these videos already as I've done them live, uh, but for those of you that haven't, it's, it never hurts to learn again and try to get some new feedback and new information. So there we start off with the GNS sign. And that is an ROT roll. Those rolls usually come 120, 60 to 120 yards. She puts it on that, that big pipe or pole and then she locks it into the machine. Oh, she's showing us again. And then it locks in and then she winds the fabric through the double and rolling machine, which is very tricky. And it's pretty amazing how this happens. Uh, you never would have thought of it, but it just goes on that side and then it rolls through. Now we're moving on to another guy. Uh, he's doing the same thing. So he's taking that big, the big pole and he's putting it through the center of the ROT roll. Don't forget ROT stands for rolled on tube. He's putting it into the bottom of the machine and then he's gonna wind it through the system. He hooks it in there and here he goes. So he winds it through, over and through and back and then over the top. And that, that triangle on the corner is the key. It's, it's like a uh, special quilting ruler right there. See that? Half goes down and then the other half goes through. So really pretty interesting and, and pretty genius how they do this. So now he has the frame where, and he starts a little bit of slack on it and then he puts the board in. So then he starts rolling. He's stepping on the gas pedal. He's looking at the meter. There's a meter I'm gonna show you right now. It shows he's going to 15 yards. So he stops at 15 yards, he resets it. So for the next bolt, he folds it over, he pulls it off the frame, and he puts it on the buggy with the rest of the bolts. After he does that, 
uh, that buggy when it's full will be moved over to the bagging area and I will show you a video of that shortly. So uh, next to the uh, this acceleration button there is a brake pedal which I'm going to show you right now. There it is. Speed and brake. Very simple. It's like driving a car. Oh, look at that great cave fabric on there getting double enrolled. So now we're at the heating station to be, the, the uh, fabric is going to be bagged. So they take the bolts. You can't see it. Uh, these are pretty fresh, uh, but they usually spray off the bolts, get all the air, um, get all the dust off. And then you can see the gentleman is showing you, uh, he's making sure the label is on strong. So now the bolt slides through the plastic. The plastic goes above and below and then it slowly goes on the conveyor belt into the heating box. It's cut and it seals the air in. Yep, see, steer clear, be careful. It's cut and then now it's gonna go through the next part of the system where it's gonna heat and it, it, it shrinks everything onto the bolt so it's nice and fit. It comes out really nice, tight, you know, no air gets in there, no dirt gets in there, and then it could travel safely to your local quilt shop. There's the bolt end label. The bolt end label usually has a UPC, the design, the country of origin, the bolt size, the company, contact information, uh, care instructions. And then the guy has a fan, he cools off the bolts too, because sometimes they get hot in that system when the um, plastic is being melted on. So there you have the boards. When we double enroll the fabric, we need to have a lot of boards. Every month we have, you know, 20, you know, it could be 15 to 25 lines being uh, double enrolled. So we need to make sure we have boards all the time. As you can see here, these rolls are set with their boards. The boards are right there and they're waiting to be cut. And those will move to the cutter and he'll have the ROT roll to cut. And then he'll have the boards to roll the fabric onto. So he's all set up and ready to go. And these are racks where we keep the fabric. It allows us to use the height of the building. So we get when we get a lot of bolts in, we could pack them up high. There's a towel in case there gets, you know, there, you know, dust accumulates on the outside of the bolts. We want to try to clean those off so the shop owners don't get them all dusty. It is very dusty in the warehouse uh, because of the fabrics being caught and there's a lot of threads and yarns floating around. So we try to clean up a lot, um, but they do wipe the bolts down before they're packed and shipped to our customers. Those are more ROT rolls and that looks like a collection. Uh, you can see a lot of the bolts are together and they come in. It could be 20, 30, 40, 50,000 yards at a time and they come in on those great rolls. And here you have a buggy. This buggy is packed up. Uh, this looks like it might be in order. So I guess I got up close in there to show you the cool cape design. And then I'm showing you the board end label. That's PWGP uh, J099. So PW in in, um, in free spirit lingo is stands for patchwork. PJ stands for Philip Jacob. So that's a trick for you when you look at the bolt end uh, for free spirit. It says PW, which is patchwork, and then the initials of the designer. Uh, PWBM is Brandon Mabley. Uh, CAFE is actually PWGP, Glorious Patchwork. Kind of miss my days going to the warehouse. Looking forward to that again. So here we have our pre-cuts. We keep the pre-cuts in their original boxes and they're just pulled from there. And those are some of the Free Spirit solids. And they have an inner pack. An inner pack is how the order ships. So there's six pieces in an inner pack. And there we have some more pre-cuts. And there we have more pre-cuts. Those are boxes of pre-cuts that were shipped over. And it looks like those are from a Tula line. The uh, kit, which kit is that? Uh, Tula Paradise, something like that. Uh, let's see, Tula Paradise. And there's the kit. So we keep the kits over there. They're all ready to go to be shipped out. And when it's time to pull them, we'll open up all the boxes and start pulling them out of there and shipping them to the customers accordingly all the pre-cuts, boxes and boxes of pre-cuts. So these are the rows of all the fabrics from all the companies. And each, the building in our warehouse is 90,000 square feet. It's uh, one building is 30,000 and then there are three buildings of 20,000 square feet. And each building has either a full company or a portion of a company. So we have Free Spirit, Blank, Studio E, um, Henry Glass, uh, A. Nathan. Sometimes we have Three Wishes, we have Staff, uh, and that's pretty much it that we have there. 
So there we're just going through the, the racks, we call these, and the racks are three rows. So you have the bottom row, the second row, and then the top row. And uh, the warehouse is pretty clean these days because uh, you know we've been selling so much during COVID, a lot of the fabric just comes in and goes right out. So they pack them up neatly on the shelf. And this is where the um, picker, who I told you, the one who picks the orders, he'll walk down the aisle and he'll pull all the bolts off that he needs. Oh, I need that one, pull one of those. Oh, I need two of those. He'll put it on the buggy. And then when he pulls every skew that he needs, he will then move the buggy over or just separate it and start another order. And then when he moves it over to packing, they know that all the orders are separated by some plastic. So they notice put them in different boxes. So this is once in a blue mood. That is a blank quilting line. And then you can see the racks. We keep color cards there for, um, for the warehouse people so they know what they're looking at and they can find errors. Uh, maybe something's mislabeled wrong. So before they cut it and put the label on the board, they want to double check and they look at the color cards. So we always send them a couple sets of the color cards for a reference. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it helped you uh, visualize you know, the processes that we go through and what goes on at our warehouse. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen this before, but if not, I'm sure it's extremely interesting. And uh, I promise you one day I will be back at the warehouse and take you on another tour. So I hope you enjoyed week five and uh, I will see you next week for week six. Take care everyone, bye-bye.